Alright guys, so the next chapter or section that we're going to talk about is probability. But before we can get into the probability part of it, um, we have to talk about different ways to count things, which I know maybe seems silly because like one, two, three, four, five, like I can just count things. But sometimes when there are lots of options or lots of different possible ways to count things, um, we need formulas to help us count lots of things. So this is a problem to maybe think about. And what I would even do is after I read it, like pause and try it on your own and then hit play again as I go over it. Um, just to see like kind of how you do it because you might do it a little differently. So a cafeteria menu at lunch includes four options for sandwiches. So you can get a hamburger, cheeseburger, veggie burger, or PB&J. Um, for sides, you have three options, fries, corn, or salad. And for dessert, you have two options, apple crisp or chocolate cake. What are all the possible combinations you can have if you can only pick one item from each category? So think about a way that you could count up all the different combinations of lunches that you can get here. And here's where I'd maybe pause it and like try to come up with a way to do it. Um, there are lots of interesting ways to do it. But the easiest way to do it, so if you haven't pressed pause yet, press pause. And I'm paused. Okay, sorry. Awkward. Um, the easiest way to do it is since I have four options for sandwiches, I take that number four. And since I have three options for sides, I take that number three. And two options for a dessert and take that number two. And I just times them all up. So I have four ways to pick the first thing, three ways to pick the second thing, and two ways to pick the last thing. And so when I times that all up, you have 24 different and unique lunches that you can pick. Okay, so that's kind of a way to do that problem. And this has a lot to do with what we're going to talk about today, how we count things. So one way to count things is called the fundamental counting principle. And what this principle says is that suppose a task can be done a amount of ways. So for instance, I have four options for sandwiches. So that sandwich that I pick, there are four ways you can do it. Hamburger, cheeseburger, veggie burger, PBJ. Um, another task could be done B ways. So for example, your sides, you have three ways to do that because you can do a fry, a corn, or a salad and so on and so on and so on. And another task could be done Z ways. So in this instance, your dessert, so two different ways um, that you can pick your dessert. Then all of the tasks can always be done in A times B times, times on and on and on until you get to the very last thing, um, number of ways. So once you multiply all that up, the product is how many different ways that those tasks can be done, okay? So another example of this can be where I don't necessarily, like some ways that people will do this is they'll, they'll brute force it. So they'll list out all the sandwiches with all the different um, sides with the different desserts and then count them all up, which is a fine way to do it. Um, there's also like a tree way that you can do it. Um, but this is like the most straightforward, simple way to do it. So another example of that could be if Lauren goes to the store and buys seven dress shirts, five pairs of pants, and three pairs of shoes from the mall, how many different outfits can she make? And this might be, you know, good for the workforce or whatever. So because there are seven different ways I can pick that dress shirt, and five different ways I can choose my pants, and three different pairs of shoes that I can pick, we just times them all up, and you can times in whatever order makes sense to you, but when I do times them all up, I have 105 different outfits that I can make. That's a lot. It's like a third of the year. So, and you just cycle them back and you got a year. So, you know, three times. It's fine. It's easy. Um, another example can be a little more deceiving. So, a Michigan license plate um, has three numbers followed by three letters, usually. There are different variations. But, um, how many different plates can you get if you can repeat numbers and letters. So we kind of have three spots for numbers and three spots 
for letters on the license plate. But it's not like I'm picking from three things. Um, the first spot, I'm picking a number. And there are 10 different numbers to pick because you can pick 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So there are 10 different digits that you could pick. And since we can repeat the next number that I pick, there are still 10 of them because, you know, if I picked a 9 on the first one, I can still pick a 9 on the next one. It's not like I have one less to pick from, although that can be a thing. Um, and another number, so still 10 to pick from. And now the next three spaces are all reserved for letters, but we're still picking from the license plates, so we're still timesing them all up. And for the first letter, I have 26 letters that I can pick from. And since I can repeat 26 for the next and 26 for the last, and when you times them all up, you get a real big number. Um, I don't have my calculator with me, so I'm looking at last year's notebook, so hopefully I multiplied this correctly last year, but I have 17,576,000 different license plates, which is um, a good thing to have. You probably maybe need more, you know, because sure one person might have a car, but some families have multiple cars. And so I don't know. I don't know how many people are in Michigan. I should know that, but I don't. <laughs> um, okay. So maybe another example that I'll try with you. So same question as the last one, but what if you can't repeat digits or letters? And this is where stuff gets interesting now versus um, when it's okay to repeat and when it's not okay to repeat. So we still have the six spaces and first one's still gonna be a number. So I have 10 digits to choose from. But now since I can't repeat, it doesn't really matter what the first digit was. I can't pick it again. So I only have nine digits left to pick from now. And then for that third digit, I can't pick the first or the second. So two digits are out and you only have eight to pick from. And then moving on to letters, you can pick from all 26 letters on the first try, but since you can't repeat letters, um, the next letter, there are only 25 of them because you already took one of them. And for the next one, there are only 24 because you've taken two of them. So hopefully you can see that this is going to be a significant amount less license plate to choose from. So that's why it's important that for license plates anyway, it probably is valuable to repeat and it's probably okay. So 11,232,000 uh, oh, 11, different license plates in, in this situation. So that's like 6 million less. That's huge. And, and that's why it's important to have these shortcuts to get really big numbers. Like I didn't want to count all those. Like that's just too many to count. Um, so I'm actually going to jump ahead to example six because this... Um, shows off a really important new mathematical operator, although we did talk about it like very first day of school. So, you know, if you remember all the way back to then, well, simpler times. Um, so example six, how many different ways can 12 skiers finish a race if there are no ties? So um, in the first place position, there are 12 different skiers that could get that. But once somebody's finished, for second place, there are only 11 skiers, and then 10, and then 9, and 8, and 7, because we're finishing the whole race. Everybody's going to finish. So we're halfway through now. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And then after all those people have finished, that poor guy comes in, and he is just stuck in that last spot. So when you kind of have... Um, a product like this where you are multiplying decreasing digits so starting with a value and then decreasing by one every time like this this is called a factorial which is that 12 like 12 is super excited um, the exclamation point right there we did talk about that very first day of school is called a factorial and it's just a mathematical operator that is a shortcut for saying we're going to take each digit less than 12 and multiply all of them until we get to 1. And so we always stop at 1. As if we were to multiply by 0, it would undo everything. And so that is a really big number. Um, again, I'm praying that I multiplied correctly last year. So 479 million. 1,600 different ways that 12 skiers could finish a race, which that seems, 
That seems like too much, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, factorial, that's what it is. And we need to keep that in mind because that's gonna be super helpful when we talk about different ways, repeating and non-repeating, and these two other sort of ways to count big numbers. So one way to count big numbers is our fundamental counting principle, which is just like if I have this task that can be done in this amount of ways, and then this other task that can be done in that amount of ways, and we can times all those numbers up. But when we kind of have decreasing patterns like this, then we have something different going on. So one thing that could be happening is that we have a permutation. So a permutation is the choice of r amount of things from a set of n things. So we have a total, so the set of n things is kind of our total amount, and how many we are picking is r. This is how many you're gonna pick. And if I am going to do that without anything going back in, so for instance, um, I'm not going to repeat a digit, or I'm not going to repeat a letter, so, or I'm going to put something back and take it again, so I do replace it, um, then your order matters, which basically is saying that if I'm going to pick from the letters A, B, and C, then we're saying that if I picked two things, so pick from A, B, C, two letters, um, then what we're saying is that B, A is different than A, B. So the order does matter. So even though they contain the same letters, because B is first here and not here, um, those two options are different. So we're going to count both of them. Okay, and so the way that we denote this so that we don't have to write all this craziness out, it's like a little formula, is we put a capital P for permutation, and then we put a little subscript N in front, and a little subscript R behind, where again, we always put our total, so N was our total, we just put our total first, and then we always pick how many, or we put how many we're picking at the end, okay? And so then your formula looks like, so if you have N, P, R, then the formula for finding how many permutations, so how many different things I can pick, um, is N factorial, divided by n minus r factorial. So that's why it's important that we understand what a factorial is. Um, and so for this super small example here, if I had three letters that I'm picking from and I'm picking two, um, and we're not putting anything back, okay? So BA is different than AB, then what we have is, so the first number goes on top, three factorial over, 3 minus 2 factorial. And so what we end up getting here is 3 times 2 times 1, because 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And we really need to simplify numerator denominator. And so in parentheses, 3 minus 2 is 1 factorial, which is just 1. So this is really six different ways that we can do that. So it's different, six different combinations of two letters from the letters A, B, and C. Now it's super important that we define zero factorial as one, which I know is maybe a little bit strange, but that's important because if I wrote down the formula like I'm going to have 12 skiers and I'm going to pick all 12 of them to finish the race, so like uh, uh, 12 and 12, we're going to have 12 factorial over 12 minus 12, which is zero factorial, which I need to define as one. Otherwise, we end up dividing by zero, which is not what we want. So example six can actually be done as a permutation um, because the order does matter here. We want to know like who is finishing first and second and third and all that stuff. Okay. Now another thing or another way that we can count things are using a combination formula that allows me to count a lot of things. So a combination is different. Um, it's still the choice of our things 
from a set of n things where r is still how many you're picking and n is the total. But in this case, um, we do not replace. We do not replace, we do replace. Um, but the order does not matter. Okay, so using that same example, if I am picking um, from A, B, and C again, two letters, then what we're saying is that B, A, and A, B are not different choices. So if I write both those out, I can't count them both. Like I, I have to take out some things here. So a combination is always a smaller set of things because these two are the same essentially because the order of the letters don't matter. And so the way that we write out our formula here is the total number of things, so n, but we use a capital C for combination, r, and then our formula for this, I should have just dropped it all down, is kind of similar. So we do n factorial over n minus r factorial, so basically the same, but because we have that double count, we need to like divide more things out, and we need to divide out exactly how many different ways we can do r, so r factorial. So using this small example here, we have three letters that we are um, picking from, and we are picking two of them. And so we would do three factorial over three minus two factorial times two factorial. <clears throat> and so three factorial is that three times two times one. Three minus two is one factorial, which is just one, times two factorial, which is two times one. And so here's where we can do a little bit of clever math. Like the ones kind of don't matter, but they can divide out here and the twos can divide out there. And so really you're just left with three over one. So the different combinations of letters um, when order doesn't matter um, is just three because those are the same. So like you can do A and B, B and C and A and C. So just three different ways to pick two letters. Um, so a couple quick examples down here, like if we're just doing four factorial, we're just doing four times three times two times one, and then you wanna get that value. So you can kind of multiply however you want. So like six times four, so 24, or you know, 12 times two, or whatever you wanna do in the one kind of doesn't matter. 10 factorial is much larger, larger. So like, you know, I might use a calculator for that, but 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one whatever that is. I don't know. Don't have my calculator. I'm so sorry. If we see something like this, this is telling me that there are 10 total items um, and we're going to do a permutation where we pick two of those items and figure out how many different ways we can do that. And so the formula for permutation, again, you can see it right up here, is the total, so 10 factorial over um, the difference. And so I can just do that super quick which is eight factorial. Now here's why I wanted to do a bigger one with you because something really clever can happen. So I know that 10 factorial is just gonna be a big long multiplication problem. And so I can write it out as 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times, nine. but I mean the rest of it is just eight factorial. And I'm doing that on purpose because on the bottom, I also have eight factorial, which is the same because like it's gonna be eight times seven times. So like all those numbers can just divide out from each other and you're really just left with 10 times nine. So there are 90 different ways to pick two items from 10 items where the ordering of those items does matter. Okay, versus a combination. So same, you got 10 things still and you're picking two of them, but now we're gonna figure out how many combinations where the order doesn't matter. So like if I have two things, but then if I pick them in a different order, we're gonna take that double counting out. So formula right here, very similar. We got 10 factorial over the difference. So eight factorial, but then we have to have that additional, like how many things we're picking factorial, so two factorial. Now I can do that same clever thing with the eights. And so we can still have 10 times nine on top and then the eight factorials can divide out, but then you got that two factorial left. So two times one, although the one kind of doesn't matter. And then you can 
can pick and choose how you divide, which is super fun. Like I can do the two into the 10. Oh my gosh, I just ripped a hole in my paper for five and then five times nine is 45. So, huh, half as many ways. Oh, that's because I'm dividing by two. That's not always a thing. Don't get excited. It's just because I'm dividing by two. Uh, okay, last but not least, it's important to know when to use a permutation and when to use a combination. So it's just all about ordering. And so in how many different ways can four different colored socks, uh, colored balls, I don't know why socks, <laughs> um, in how many ways can four different colored balls be arranged? So because we wanna know how many ways, that means permutations. Okay, so the ordering of balls matters. And we're gonna pick from four total colored balls and we're gonna arrange all four of them. So this is a permutation because the ordering of the balls does matter. So we got four, permutation four. And this is where that, knowing that zero factorial is one thing comes into play because we're gonna have four factorial divided by um, the difference and four minus four is zero factorial. So knowing that that's one is super important, um, but it kind of just makes your denominator go away. So that's four times three times two times one. So. 24 different ways but like also you could have just thought about it you know in the first position you got four balls that can go there and then in the next position only three balls can go there because you already picked one so I think that hopefully makes sense and then example six here so you're gonna pick seven books from a stack of 32 how many different so like how many groups of seven are possible like I don't care the like order of the books in the groups I just want to know like how many groups so that is a combination because the ordering of the groups doesn't really matter I'm just gonna have a group over here a group over there so that's what makes this a combination and I'm picking seven from 32 so 32 is my total seven is how many I'm picking so for a combination we have 32 factorial over the difference so 25 factorial and then 7 factorial I should have scooped this over. So I'm gonna go over here. Now that 32, I can count it down until it gets to 25 and then the 25 factorials can cancel out. So really you're just gonna have 32 times 31 times 30 times 29 times 28 times 27 times 26. 25 factorial and 25 factorial on bottom canceled out. But then I still have the seven factorial. So seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. But again, you can do a lot of clever dividing there. So like I could do the seven into the 28 for four. I could do the six into the 30 for five. Oop, and then the fives can go, that's fun. Oop, and the fours can go, bye. Um, three, you can go into something. Oh yeah, three into 27 for nine. And then the two could go into the 26 for 13. And so all my denominators are gone because really it's just one. So you're doing like 32 times 31 times 29 times nine times 13. Really big number, don't know if I wrote it down. Oh yeah, 3,336,000 uh, 365, numbers are hard, 856 groups. That's insane. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to count that. Nobody's actually gonna do that. That's why we need combinations, permutations. All right, try it out. Hopefully it's fun.